Hi, I'm Brian Furrier doing High School Biology. Today's topic, the six characteristics of living things. Biology is a study of life, so of course the first question is, what's living? Well, we have six characteristics to determine that. If you have all six, congratulations, you're alive. If you're missing one or more, then you're not. Right. First off, all living things will reproduce. This you can see on a daily basis. People have children. Plants will have their offspring, and even bacteria will get larger and eventually split off into multiple bacteria, thereby reproducing. All living things will also respond to the environment. Now, if you're sitting next to someone, you can demonstrate this. Poke him or her. He or she will definitely respond to the environment. All living things also display a high level of organization. This may not be the most immediately evident thing, but when you think about it, we are organisms made up of organ systems, made up of organs, made up of tissue, made up of cells. We are highly organized. Even the smallest bacteria is filled with organelles and genetic material. They are highly organized. All living things will also use energy, and you can demonstrate them yourself. Just go for a walk, or a jog, or a swim, or make biology tutoring videos. That's all a use of energy. Living things will also grow. You can see this on a daily basis again. Children growing up into adulthood, plants growing taller, growing thicker, even bacteria will grow bigger and then split off and reproduce. Now the last one, this H, is one of these biology words. All living things maintain homeostasis. Homeostasis refers to a dynamic equilibrium. Let me give you an example. Humans are at about 90 degrees Fahrenheit. That's their body temperature most of the time. We'll say it's about here in my thermometer, if you will. Now, let's say it's a hot day. A human walks outside. Their body temperature starts to rise because of all the heat. Well, then they'll sweat to cool themselves down, and it'll drop back to 98 degrees Fahrenheit. That's what I mean by dynamic equilibrium. The human walking out had an equilibrium at 98 degrees Fahrenheit. It was upset by the temperature change that was outside. The body then restored the equilibrium by sweating. If there's a change in the environment, the body will also change, adapt to that change, to bring everything back to normal. That's homeostasis, that's dynamic equilibrium. These are the six main characteristics of living things. And I know it's a lot to remember, so you can use the mnemonic here, rough. If you will, life is rough. Oh, of course, some teachers will give you seven, some will even give you eight characteristics but you can fit pretty much all of them into these six. There is one that they can give you, though, that there's a bit of a debate over, and that's the idea that all living things need cells. Certainly, I'm made of cells, you're made of cells, plants are made of cells, bacteria are cells, but a virus is not. It's just a protein coat and genetic material. However, a lot of people still consider it living. Just keep in mind that there's a debate about needing cells to be considered living. To recap, all living things reproduce, respond to the environment, display a high level of organization, use energy, grow, and maintain homeostasis. You can memorize this with the mnemonic rough. There is, however, a debate about the idea of cells, whether or not you need cells to be considered living. Some say yes, some say no. It all boils down to the virus, which is not made of cells, but is often considered living. Keep that debate in mind, but go with what your teacher gives you. Alright, that's all for now. Again, I'm Brian Freer. See you next time.